All right, welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So today we're doing another video here, and today we're going to do how to determine significant figures. So first of all, I'm gonna go over um, a couple of examples, which include the rules, and the rules are going to be very important for you. So uh, remember, I am the Crazy Hat Chemist, the best place to go for all your chemistry needs of how to figure out how to do chemistry. All right, so here we go. Rules for determining significant figures. Rule number one, all non-zero integers are significant without exception and any combination of those. So the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine are all significant figures. Consequently, in this number, one, two, three, there are actually three significant figures because they are all non-zero integers. So this has three significant figures. In this next number, 5, 000, uh, excuse me, 56,862, all these are also non-zero integers, and that is five significant figures. All right? Fantastic. All right. Then we have rules for zeros. So the rules for zeros is as follows. There are three rules for zeros. So... Let me back up on this here a little bit so you can see the entirety of these words here. And here we go. Leading zeros, captive zeros, and trailing zeros. So leading zeros are in front of a number. They never count. So leading zeros, very simply, never count as a significant figure. So what is a leading zero? So this is a leading zero. This is a leading zero, and as well as those. Those are leading zeros. So those zeros do not count in this number. 0 0.123, there are three significant figures because those are the one, the two, and the three are non-zero integers. This zero, this zero, this zero, and this zero. The highlighted zeros here do not count because they're leading zeros. This four and five are non-zero integers. They count. This number has two significant figures in it. Then... We have captive zeros. Captive zeros, captive zeros are between two non-zero integers and they always count as significant figures. So this right here is a captive zero. This zero right here is held captive between a three and a six. The three and the six count as significant figures and because this is a captive zero, it counts three significant figures in that number. Then, this zero, this zero, and this zero are captive zeros, and those three captive zeros count, as well as this seven and the two, for a total of five significant figures, because these three zeros are being held captive between the seven and the two, which are non-zero integers. Boom, got that. Then, trailing zeros are zeros after a non-zero integer, and they only count if there's a decimal in the number. Okay, so this is a trailing zero. There is no decimal in this number here. So this is one significant figure because the four counts, but not the zero. This is a trailing zero. But this number right there has a decimal in it. Since it has a decimal in it, and here is the decimal, the zero, the trailing zero counts. So this has two significant figures, all right? Then we have some more trailing zeros. There's another trailing zero, trailing zero, trailing zero, trailing zero, trailing zero. All those zeros are trailing a non-zero integer, which happens to be a five. Does this number have a decimal in it? Yes, it does. I'm highlighting it in pink. These three, as well as these two, a total of five non-trailing, uh, sorry, five trailing zeros count as well as that five. So that's six significant figures, all right? The next number, this is 100. This 100 has no decimal in it, so only the one counts as a significant figure and not the trailing zeros. All right, fantastic. All right, so let's uh, go through this um, entire worksheet here, and I have 26 problems to do. And uh, this is how to determine significant figures worksheet number one. All right, so let's uh, see if we can nail this down here. So I'm gonna do like what we just did. I'm gonna zoom on in each problem so that you can see them a little bit more clearly. 
Okay, and so what we're going to do is determine the number of significant figures that we have in each case. So that is a non-zero integer, a non-zero integer, a non-zero integer, that's three significant figures in that number. Non-zero integer counts, that is um, that non-zero integer and is an eight, that counts. These two highlighted yellow zeros are trailing zeros. There is no decimal in the number, so it's one significant figure, okay? This is a leading zero. Leading zeros never count the one and the three. They count, so that's two significant figures. There are two leading zeros in this number, and the five and the six are two non-zero integers, and they count for two significant figures. Okay, there's a um, bunch of trailing zeros, and there's a one. The one counts because it's a non-zero integer. These are trailing zeros that do not count as significant figures, so this only has one significant figure. I want to make the clarification that just because the zeros are not significant doesn't mean that they're not important. This number is 10,000. Therefore, the zeros need to be in the number, but they are not significant figures. There's a very clear distinction there. Okay, this one counts because it's a non-zero integer. There is a decimal in this number. I'm highlighting that in pink. And then these um, four zeros are trailing zeros. Because there's a decimal in the number and they are trailing zeros, they count because of the decimal in the number. So this has five significant figures and these zeros do count because of the decimal. Again, we have another number with a decimal in the number with trailing zeros. Non-zero integers always count. And then the rest of these zeros here are all trailing zeros. They all count, why? because there is a decimal in the number. So that's three, six, seven, eight significant figures. Okay, I'm gonna scroll this up just a little bit. Here we go. Um, if the number is in exponential notation, so if the number is correctly, properly written in exponential notation, what I've just highlighted times 10 to the five, that is only the placeholders. So we do not need to worry about those. So those do not count. And then therefore everything counts prior to that. So this is a one, a zero and a zero. That's three significant figures. They all count. Okay, moving this up just a little bit more so we get everything on this. Here we go, yes. Uh, let's see here. This number also on problem number nine is also um, in exponential notation. That times 10 to the negative three is letting you know it's in exponential notation. And if it is properly written, then all of the numbers count. That's the one and the zero. They count two significant figures. What is proper exponential notation? Proper exponential notation is when you have a number to the left of the decimal and any other numbers after that they all count. That number to the left of the decimal must be a non-zero integer. That's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or a nine. It cannot be a zero. It cannot be a 10. It cannot be an 11. It cannot be a 55. So here we go. Problem number 10 is also in exponential notation. Okay. Um, but everything counts prior to the times 10 to this. So that means that there are four significant figures. One, two, three, four, four significant figures. I didn't underline these in red, but these count just like before. Okay, fantastic. All right, leading zeros do not count, okay? Um, is there a decimal in the number? Yes, there is. And therefore this trailing zero counts because there's a decimal in the number. The five and the two count because they're non-zero integers, and this is a trailing zero with the decimal in, them. in the number. It counts three significant figures. Okay, um, these three zeros are trailing zeros, but there is no decimal in the number, so they do not count, and so this has one significant figure. These two zeros, that zero and that zero, are trailing a non-zero integer, that's the five. But it has a decimal in the number. So since there's a decimal in the number, these two trailing zeros count, as well as the one and the five. And so that's four significant figures, All right? 
Fantastic. We have done 13 FR26. We are halfway done. So it's a time for a little bit of an advertisement here. And the advertisement is uh, you are watching The Crazy Hat Chemist. That is correct. I am The Crazy Hat Chemist, and I please implore you to watch my videos on YouTube. I would greatly appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch as many videos as you deem possible in the time that you have. I would greatly appreciate that. All right, so here we go. We're going to continue on. Um, these zeros are leading zeros. Leading zeros never count. The three and the eight count because they're non-zero integers. This zero here is a captive zero, and captive zeros count. This number has a decimal in it, so that means that these two trailing zeros count. So that's a total of five significant figures. This right here is a captive zero. Captive zeros count. The six, the nine counts because they're non-zero integers and this captive zeros zero counts. So that's three significant figures. Leading zeros do not count the three, the six, the eight count because those are non-zero integers. This is a captive zero. That captive zero counts. And wait, but there's more. This is a decimal. Therefore, these two trailing zeros count because there's a decimal in the number. So captive zero counts, trailing zeros count with a decimal. So that is six significant figures. Leading zeros never count. Non-zero integers always count. Is there a decimal in the number? Oh, yes, there is. So consequently, these two zeros count. So that would be four significant figures, okay? Um, this here is a captive zero, captive zeros count, and the non-zero integers count. So this is three significant figures. Leading zeros never count. Non-zero integers always count one significant figure. I'm gonna scroll this up here just a little bit. And so you can see more of these problems. Cruising right through this video here. Here we go. Almost, yes, that will cover us for the vast majority. Um, these are captive zeros right here, and they count as well as the non-zero integers of three and one. So this is a total of four significant figures. Non-zero integers of four and two count. And then these are trailing zeros. They do not count because there is no decimal in the number. So this has, whoops, excuse me, two significant figures. There is a decimal in this next number. I'm going to highlight that in pink. That means that this trailing zero counts. And then these two captive zeros count because nothing to do with the decimal. So that three counts, that three counts, and these captive zeros count. And then because of the decimal, this zero counts. So that's a total of five significant figures. Yes, fantastic. You're doing a fantastic job. And let's uh, slide this over just a little bit here. All right. These are leading zeros. They do not count. The four and the two counts because they are non-zero integers. And then these two captive zeros count. And that would be four significant figures. Leading zeros never count. Um, the eight, the two, the one, they count because they're all non-zero integers. That's three significant figures. This one counts because it's a non-zero integer and there is a decimal in the number. That means that all of these four zeros that are trailing count. So this number has five significant figures. This number here is written in exponential notation. That means everything to the left of the times 10 to the counts if it's written correctly, and that's three significant figures. Let me just delineate this a little bit more on the exponential notation. This would be incorrect exponential notation of any kind like that because of this right here. You have to have this number be a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or a nine. That's a zero, so that is improper exponential notation. That does not apply. As well as if we were to have like 56.9 times 10 to the four, 
This is also improper exponential notation because the number prior to the times 10 to the, before the decimal, needs to be between one and nine. And that is certainly bigger. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this very, very short video on how to determine significant figures. Again, I am the Crazy Hat Chemist. Please watch my videos on YouTube and please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Send in some comments. I love you and talk to you later. Bye for now.